the stake, you know what's on the line, the excitement level, how do you contain it a little bit and say, hey, we still have a process to go through? That's interesting you say that because um, yesterday when I spoke to the team, we went over exactly what this weekend entailed and what was on the line. And the reason why I did that is because they have all this information in their hands, right? So I wanted to make sure they understood it was accurate, but also we, we kind of reminded them about, hey, when you're climbing a mountain, you don't just stare at the mountaintop, you just go one step at a time. So just reminding them about, hey, the reason why we're in this spot is because we've done an amazing job of just doing whatever's next and whatever that day called for, you know? So, and having to focus on not focusing on winning, but doing what it takes to win. So just reminded them about, hey, how important that was moving forward into this weekend. What do you think people didn't understand about this team in the preseason polls <clears throat> Well, I have a respect for those that are, you know, trying to pick the teams and trying to really just project what was going to happen. You know, we are a program where we have a lot of new faces. And sometimes it's, it's hard to kind of go all in on a team when you have quite a, a new, a quite, um, so many new faces, I'll say. Do we have a core group of guys that were back from the Super Regional team a year ago? Yes, we did. But... There will there were still some some holes and question marks, right? About hey, what would the rotation officially look like? What would the bullpen look like? Hey, who was gonna you know fill the other two infield spots? You know, um, who was gonna do the outfield? Who was gonna fill in there? So there was a lot of you know still question marks out there, and I think anytime you you do that, our league is just so hard to think that guys are gonna come in and do well that maybe that weren't in your program or that they don't know about. So um, out of respect for those, I, I would say that just the question marks, but I think one thing that maybe people didn't realize is just how competitive the guys are. Like we just have a group of just uber competitive individuals. And again, that's even hard to project because you don't know the makeup of the team, but their competitive spirit, I know you've heard me talk about that over and over, but it is, the foundation of how we're wired. Yeah. It is easy to say we knew this was going to happen when you're doing it and you're at this point in the season. These guys were saying this five, six months ago yeah. after the fall. Did you see this type of, wow, success? You know, you, you bring up a really good point. Belief is a powerful thing. Like, it is so powerful. And I've always said this, and I share this with our team, that true confidence comes from the inside out, not the outside in. I'll say that again, like true confidence comes from the inside out, not the outside in. So you guys, others, myself, the coaching staff, we can tell them all the time, you're a great team, you're a great player, blah, blah, blah. Well, that would be coming from the outside in. But true confidence, comes from the inside out and them knowing and believe it. And it's like, so can we help through some of that? Absolutely. But it's not real unless they believe it and it's in their heart. And when it's inside your heart and you know that and you truly believe it, well, then you got something. And it sounds like they do that. Has it been harder to coach and teach that with just social media and, and generations being so different now? Yes, and I just covered this. Um, I just did a, another Zoom. But this is the day and age, and you guys know this, that their phones, it's a powerful thing. And it's always in your face. So years ago, if you didn't like the way you were playing or things weren't going great, you could just not read the newspaper. Or you go, I'm not going to watch just the news, right? Well, that's just harder now because, look, they are on social media. And... They should be, and they should want to be, and but they're just accessible. So their ability to, you know, we talk about when's expiring at midnight and things like that. I think that mindset is so important. But then also the mindset of like, hey, let's just focus on what's important right now, and let's not worry about what happened yesterday or look forward to the future. Let's just just do what, what's the most important thing right now, and let's have the best practice we can have, and then let's go have the best lift we can have, and then let's go eat the best dinner we can eat, and 
go get the best night's sleep and then just wake up tomorrow and just do whatever's next, right? Like, so I just think having that mindset is probably as, as much important now as it's ever been. We've seen uh, Ben Cleaver and uh, Patrick Herrera come through in some big spots in game three. What does it say about those guys to kind of kind of wait their turn and then take advantage of that opportunity? And how do you see them kind of going forward into this postseason run? Well, I, I've said this all year long. and We have an, a really deep team, and we have a lot of really good players that deserve opportunities to play. And, you know, as a coach, a lot of people are like, man, that's a good thing as a coach. Yes, it is, you know. But it's also sometimes it hurts, you know, that you look over there on the bench and you're like, man, that's a really good player. I wish I could get more opportunities for him. We have some freshmen that are, phew, they're phenomenal. I mean, you think about the hit that Eli Smoke got. I mean, in a huge moment, guy's a really good player. He deserves more opportunities, but we just have really good players in front of him. And um, the two you mentioned, you know, Patrick Carrera, he has just done everything he's can to help our team. He's an infielder, and we shifted him to play some outfield. Wally was out early, and there were some more opportunities there, and some guys maybe not playing as well, and some maybe injuries and banged up, and we put him out there just to get him more opportunities to try to help our team. And you know what? He can play third base too. I mean, he showed that and just got a huge hit. I'm just so happy for him because he's just been sitting there waiting his turn, just waiting his turn. And when the time came, he came through. And same thing with Ben Cleaver. You know, Ben's been a little banged up this year. But he's a guy that we slated as our midweek starter, and, and our hopes for him this season would have been, hey, maybe he's into the rotation or maybe he's thrown out of the bullpen on the weekends by now. So the fact that he got that opportunity and took advantage of it, none of us were surprised. Um, we made a commitment five and six weeks ago to just start throwing some of those guys more and more um, uh, throughout the middle of the week, and he took advantage of it and definitely not surprised. But those are two competitive guys that have, you know, in Pat's case, he's been waiting his turn. In Ben's case, just waiting to get healthy to be able to show what he can do. You know, this past weekend, you go into the ninth and, and twice, and you give up that late lead on the road in Gainesville, and then you end up going to the 10th, and you pull out both games. Like, this late in the season, how important is it for your team to show that resilience that they did? Yeah, and they, it's really important. And, you know, I think any time you can have these experiences, all it does is help your team. Right, like Kristen and I, um, we, I'll use our son Reeves as an example. We always say we don't want to give Reeves things. We want to give him experiences. So in his room, he just pretty much has books because we want him to read, right, or just how important that is. But he doesn't have a bunch of things in his room. So what we try to do is invest our time, energy, and resources on giving him experiences. And I believe that throughout the course of the season, every team is going to have all these different experiences and those are more impactful. So every time we have that experience that, Hey, look, we, um, we were down and we were able to come back or we had a lead and we gave up a lead or, um, you know, I just think about the at bat in that game about, uh, Mitch Daly. He's down. We're down to our last strike. The game's about to be over and he just battles and finds a way to get on base and passes to the next guy, the next guy, the next guy, the next guy. <laughs> And I will just say this too, the conference prepares you for that. Conference prepares you for that. You, this would be our 10th straight week of playing an amazing opponent. And it's why the SEC has done so well in postseason play, is because when you get to the postseason, every game right now feels like a super regional type game. Our guys have been there and done that and felt that. So all of those experiences have been good and they'll serve us well moving forward. How much does the number one overall seed seem to mean? If at all, I guess, versus, you know, number two, number three, number four, whatever it might end up. Yeah, um, I think they're all important. Obviously, if you can be number one, you want it. Like, let's not dance around that, right? If you can be the one, like, be the one. But I would say being the top eight is super important, as you know, because now the path to Omaha is in your hands and it's at your place. You know, we experienced that last year, you know, having to go to um, Baton Rouge. You know, it's a tough place, but there's, there's no place like home, and you want to be able to play at home. So um, the number one, absolutely, you want it. Um, but I think looking at it from that perspective, the top eight, if you can just get that top eight and make the path through your home is uh, obviously better. Obviously, last year's team saw some success, too. What's the biggest difference between your group this year and your group last year? Um, 
there's a lot of similarities. There's a lot of differences as well. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to talk about what's similar. Um, I, I just think that they are a team. Like they legitimately are a team. And you know, we say the strength of our team is our team and it is just filled with people that just legitimately want to do whatever they can to help Kentucky win. And we just have a lot of unselfish people that are willing to make sacrifices. Uh, whether it's in their playing time, in their style of play, in their mentality. Um, they're just very, very unselfish. And they genuinely love and care for each other, and they want to play for each other. So, and they have fun doing it. So, um, this year's team is, you know, last year's team had like maybe four or five like stronger, different personalities to where this one is just like a, maybe like a, a as a unit, it's just like fucker. Like, <laughs> they just have a lot more fun. Like. Uh, you know, and that team had fun last year too, you know, so maybe that's like a difference is we had certain personalities last year to where like you would go to that one guy and now it just maybe we're a team full of just a bunch of guys that, you know, collective. But overall, the common thing is their love for Kentucky and their desire to win and want to win for this city, the state, the BBN, and also each other. Yeah. How special has the season been? Yeah, it's been good. It's, they've been. Like, it's just, it's just hard to get that many 18 to 24 year olds to just be all together on the same page. It's just really hard. Like, you know, the, the microphones here, they could be facing different ways and you try to straighten one and this one gets out of whack and you try to put that one in and you're like, okay, yeah, we got, it's just a lot. It's just really hard. But this team is just, just great dudes. Like just week in and week out of just, they, they're just a joy. Like they just bring like just this. I, I can't, I don't know, I've got to do a better job of like finding the words and maybe being different, but they just give you this piece that, hey, we got this. Like their belief, their edge, their toughness, like everything about them from that standpoint is just so much fun to be around. And they literally, they. They're at their best when they just move on. Like whatever just happened, they just go to the next thing, go to the next thing, go to the next thing, and it's like, it's over. Like, and it's like, all right, let's just do this, let's do this, let's be great at this. Like, oh yeah, we got this, let's go. Like, they're just ability to just do all of that. And you know what? Like, you get onto them and they respond. Um, you um, challenge them, they respond. They get off track or they get off focus for a half a second and boom, they're able to get it right back. You know, I mean, they just had a 3.2 something team GPA like this spring. I mean, they just, they, just the, the people, all the, the fans and the people just like, you don't know what your, your team did to me. And like, they just changed my sons and this guy and this, and I'm like, oh no, I, they do it. They're doing it to me. Like they're incredible. Like they're just a very, just well-rounded, group of people that just, it's been a joy. It has been so fun. Like, I mean, it, phew, it, uh, I'm gonna miss these dudes, especially our seniors that we're honoring this weekend. Just a lot of really good, good, good people. To piggyback off of that a little bit, and I don't know if you've done it, but have you gone back and thought, this team is similar or different than 18 years ago when this happened, and no one was picking Kentucky to do anything, and lo and behold, you win a regular season championship. I was uh, texting with Colin Calgill yesterday. What a dude. Um, Lexingtonian that won the SEC. Psh, that's, like, that's awesome. I think about some of our guys that are here. But um, that team and this team, so competitive. I'm talking like some of the highest level competitors and edge. You know, and you watch our games, and there's been times where it's been chippy, and there's been warnings, and you know, from both sides. But whew, man, those two teams, their competitive spirits, so similar, so similar. Just like a group of individuals that are just so tough and competitive. I think that is the biggest similarity between the two teams. It's just how competitive. I'm talking like even those guys. I mean, still communicate with a lot of them. Um, off that 016. Still, I mean, I'm talking a lot of those guys I still communicate with, but their competitive spirit, oh, off the charts, off the charts.
Resilience continues to be a thing throughout the season, and I know a couple games back, post game, someone asked you for a word, and you were like, I keep saying resilience, but I'm trying to find a stronger word. Have you found one yet, or are you still looking for it? I don't know. Like, no, I'm still, you guys help me. <laughs> um, a million, uh, I'll tell you this, a million Petra gives me uh, words each week that I've got to mix in. He keeps learning all these American words, and I... Uh, Darren, I forgot to do the word this week. I just forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just ecstatic to be around him, like, every day. But uh, I don't know. I don't know the word. I don't know the word. I, I, I feel like every week I, it's like something different. It's like, I don't know. You got one? No. You, you guys no, have one? Okay. You. I think you guys have one. Uh, yeah, but resilience is, uh, you know, I think that what a compliment that is, you know. Thesaurus.com says tenacity, persistency, potion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the wildcat, right? Like sticking your claws into somebody, right? Like, yeah, yeah, they're tenacious, you know. I need to teach, I need to teach Pete that word, I'm sure. <laughs> Maybe he already knows it, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, if you come up with one. Okay, let's just... Let me know. Thank you. Thank you. Looking outside, you guys got the new bleachers in the outfield. What is that going to mean to the environment coming in this weekend and the next couple of weekends? Awesome. Um, we uh, we got back at a little after midnight on Sunday. By the time we uh, got here, I maybe it was closer to one o'clock, and um, I'm the first one to just go. On. I'm tired. Right? But uh, Brock said the guys saw it and they were so excited that he had to turn the lights on. Like, Brock, turn the lights on. And it was like 1 o'clock in the morning or 12 30, 12 45, whatever it was. And he's like, turn the lights on. This is awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. I'm just so thankful for our fans to come out, right? I mean, the reason why we're having to do that is because more people are coming. And uh, so that wouldn't be possible without the Zulu Nation. So, super thankful for all of our fans all weekend. I'm going to need you again this weekend. Um, but yeah, that just to see that it actually reminded me of 17. It brought back a lot of memories to those guys and communicate with a lot of those guys. A lot of them will be here this weekend. But um, just seeing that, and that usually means that you're doing good and there's going to be a postseason game at your home. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we want. Yeah, this is just two years in a row. It's pretty awesome. In this tough SEC conference, you know anyone can really be anyone. I know Vandy's towards the bottom, but if you don't show up, what are you what are you looking for in this matchup this weekend, and what are you hoping from your team? Yeah, um, we're we're at our best when we pitch and defend at a really high level. That is us at our best, and we feel like um, when we are you know feel like we're suffocating our opponents and just not giving them anything. So that's walks, the wild pitches, the stolen bases, the errors, whatever. We are at our best when we make our opponents earn everything. So our focus would be for this weekend for us to make sure that our opponents earn everything they get. And then for us to be opportunistic offensively, you know, to create pressure. We're at our best when we're doing everything. That means we're hitting homers, extra bases, we're running the bases aggressively and intelligently. If that means we need to bunt, we'll do that. If it means we need to hold our ground and get in the five pitches, so for us to be able to execute what we believe is our offensive identity, but it starts with our pitching and defense to make our opponents earn everything they get. Going off that, I know you guys have played some really good offensive teams the last couple weeks, but what's kind of the biggest key to get some of the guys in the bullpen back on track? Yeah, I just think that how much we use them and when we use them. You know, we went through a stretch there for a while where we were maybe getting some mileage out of our starters, and therefore we had some guys in our bullpen that had to throw quite frankly, more than they're accustomed to and probably more than, than they probably needed to. So to be able to get to a spot and a rhythm and a flow where guys are being used out of our bullpen for shorter periods of time and shorter stints. And, you know, obviously when you do that to a team and you just feel like you have a different arm and you're facing somebody different all the time, that could be hard to prepare for. So for us to be able to use them in the right spots and not to use them um, as much, as we've had to use them maybe in the past. It seems like Devin just continues to look healthier and his at-bats just keep kind of building on each other. How important is it for him to kind of stay going and how can he level the team up even more if he catches a, catches a spark this late in the year? Yeah, you know, he had a really cool conversation with Coach Ammo um, before last, uh, maybe the Arkansas series. And, uh, he's like, Coach Ammo, he's like, 
you better not be worried about my batting average or anything like that. He's like, I was in the same spot last year, and look what happened. You know, it's like, he's like, Gee. maybe he might even talked about himself in the third person. That was, that was coming around. Like, you be ready. Like, you know, so, um, you know, obviously his presence and uh, his leadership is crucial for us. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's, I mean, I just think about the, in 22. Did he make the, Matt, did he make the all SEC tournament team in 22? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. And then in 23, he was our regional, right? <laughs> Wasn't he the MVP of the regional? And, um, so he's, he, he's, he's good. Just let, just keep him healthy and put him in the lineup and let him go. And uh, he's going to do his thing. Excited about uh, this weekend for, uh, to honor all of our seniors. I think that's really exciting about that. And then, um, on Saturday, our salute to service to all the special people that allow us to do what we get to do. You know, we'll get an opportunity to honor them. So that's always neat. I know Greg and his team, we do that every Saturday, our final game, I believe, of the regular season. So um, excited about those opportunities this weekend.